Hey everyone, in today's video I want to share with you my updated step-by-step -step skin retouching tutorial. So I use a method called frequency separation which you can do in Photoshop. And in today's video we're going to be editing this photo right here. I took this on the Sony a7R 4 with the GM 400mm f2.8 lens. It's a very unconventional lens to take portraits with but it was a very fun photo shoot so if you want to see how we captured this and other images with that lens I'll leave the behind the scenes linked in the description. And also make sure you switch this video over into 4K so you can watch it at the highest resolution. So here we have the original unedited photo. This is straight out of the camera. And then this file right here is edited with my earthy Lightroom preset pack. So I applied that preset in Lightroom and then have opened it in Photoshop. And this is the file that I want to edit. So to create the base of our frequency separation retouching, I'm going to start by duplicating hitting our layer twice. I'm going to rename our first layer to color and I'm going to rename our second layer to texture and then hide that layer. So first I'm going to select our color layer and I'm going to head to filter blur Gaussian blur and I'm going to blur it by about three pixels. You don't need to do a huge amount of blurring and hit OK. Then I'm going to select our texture layer and make it visible again and I'm going to head to image and apply image and you want to use these settings here. You want our blending mode to be on subtract, our scale on two and our offset on 128. The last thing you want to do is change your layer to color and let's hit OK. The final thing we're going to do is head to our layer blending mode over here and change it to linear light. And we're going to end up with a photo that looks exactly the same as our original image. So in order to know if you've done that all correctly, you want to zoom into your portrait and when you hide and unhide those two layers that we've just added absolutely nothing should change and that's how you know you've done a good job. So it is a little bit annoying having to apply all those steps every single time you want to retouch an image. So I have created a skin retouching Photoshop action. So if you want to download that for free, I'll leave it linked in the description and you can just install it in Photoshop, hit play and it does all those steps for you. When I'm retouching a photo, the first thing that I want to work on is the color and the tone of our retouching. So I'm going to select our color layer and then I'm going to create a new blank layer on top of that where we're going to start working on our retouching and we're going to be using two main tools today. The first one is the stamp tool and the second one is the healing brush tool. So with our stamp tool, if I bring it up to 100% opacity and I select uh, just the eyeball here, it's going to create a perfect stamp of what we've selected. On the other hand, if I select the healing brush tool and select the eyeball, when I paint that in and then let go of the mouse, it's going to blend that in to the texture and the color of the background. So for our first few steps, we're going to be using the stamp tool. So with the stamp tool, I like to use it with a very soft brush so it's very feathered and I always use it at opacity 20%. That just works perfectly when you're retouching. With the color layer and our stamp tool, what I like to do is balance out the highlights and the shadows on someone's skin to make them appear more smooth. So as you can see, we've got quite a dark shadow here next to her eye. We also have some shadows and highlights here under her eye, which accentuates her eye bags. We've got a bit of a highlight here on her forehead. We have a bit of a shadow here on her upper lip. And all these things we're going to balance out by using our color layer over here and our stamp tool. So I'm gonna zoom right up here into the eye. And the first thing I wanna work on is getting rid of that eye bag. So I'm going to sample from this kind of brighter section of the skin right here by holding down Alt and clicking. And then I'm going to brush over that shadowy part. And as you can see, it's going to start lightening up those shadows and making it appear more even. And then again, I'm going to sample from here and brighten up that area under the eye. And again, I'm going to sample from here and just brighten this little section here. And what I like to really do when I'm retouching is that I constantly have one hand on the Alt key and I'm constantly holding down Alt sampling and brushing little sections at a time to balance out the shadows and the highlights of the skin. So once you've got a little bit done, we're going to zoom back out and I'll show you a before and after. 
so you can see what a difference that has made already. Once you're happy with what you've done, this next step is what I think makes your retouching look still very natural and that's to bring down the opacity of the layer so it blends into the image and it doesn't look too over edited. Now that I'm happy with that little area, I'm going to make another new layer and I wanna work on this shadow here next to her eye. So I'm gonna sample from a slightly brighter area of her eye here and slowly go over that section. There we go. And then I'll bring down the opacity slightly, have a look at the before and after. Yeah, and I'm happy with that. So something to keep in mind is that you want to be sampling from very similar areas that you're brushing over. Because if you sample from a dark area here on her cheekbone, and then you wanna start brushing over here, it's not going to blend in very nicely. So I always do my best to sample from very similar tones to have it be nice and blended while you're editing and not have like that huge <laughs> drastic change in tone. Next, I'm going to work on her left eye and I'll just speed this up a little bit because we're gonna be doing the exact same thing we did to the right hand side as well. So now I'll start with a new layer again and the next section that I wanna focus on is the shadow on her upper lip here. So I'm gonna sample from this it's kind of like a mid-tone looking area and I'm gonna slowly brush over this shadowy bit and the highlight bit because I want it to all be the same tone. Happy with what that looks like. So then I'll bring down the opacity and this time I want to get a slightly bigger brush because I'm going to work on this lower jawline area. And again, I'm just holding down the Alt key, constantly sampling from new sections. And I'm always making sure to sample from very similar tones to where I'm painting. So I'm really happy with what that's looking like so far. Here's a before and here's an after. So when one of my next tips when it comes to retouching is that retouching looks very, very obvious if you only retouch the face. So I always recommend to retouch any skin that you can see in the portrait. Again, just like the face, I want to match where I'm sampling from. So when I'm brushing in this dark part of the neck, I'm going to paint over that section as well. And then when we get to the lighter bits, I'm going to brush over the lighter sections of the neck. And then every once in a while, depending on like the lighting of the photo, for example, just here under the neck, we have a very bright section. So I'm gonna turn that down a little bit with my stamp tool as well. And she also has a little bit of a tan line just here near the right strap. So I'm also going to darken that with the stamp tool as well. Okay, and here we have the before and after. So this is everything that we're just doing with the color layer. And I feel like usually with a lot of portraits, just editing this is enough and I don't need to do anything extra. But for today's video, we will be using the texture layer as well. So what I actually like to do is I select the texture layer and then I just create a new blank layer on top of that. And this is where we'll start using our spot healing brush tool and healing brush tool. So I like to use both these tools. The spot healing brush tool is really convenient because it automatically samples for you. So you don't actually need to hold alt the way we did with our stamp tool. So you just basically press over any blemishes that you might see in the photo and it automatically gets rid of them for you, which is awesome. However, I do find that sometimes it can be a little bit finicky and it doesn't really blend the texture in properly. As you can see here, it's getting a little bit blotchy. So if you find that the spot healing brush is doing that to your photos, then I just like to use the healing brush tool instead. Works very similarly to the stamp tool where you hold down option or alt and you select where you want to sample from and that's what it's going to paint to blend into your photo. A little trick that I use so I don't go overboard when it comes to the texture layer because this is where you start removing texture and we want to retain as much texture as possible is that I like to zoom out and look at the portrait as a whole and I see what kind of stands out and is bothering me in the photo. So I can see this little speck of dirt. So I'm gonna zoom in and remove that, then zoom back out and I can see that little spot. And I basically work with a teeny tiny brush so I don't change too much of someone's face. And I'm really only wanting to remove things that are not permanent. So if there's anything like a beauty mark or a scar, I usually just leave those in my portraits and I will only remove things like pimples and eye bags and things that are just not permanent on someone's face. So the final thing that I wanna do to this photo is 
actually work on the colors a little bit. So if we zoom in, we've got a little bit of a pink patch on Heidi's nose. And if we zoom down, you can see her skin here in the shadowy bits are a little bit pink compared to her skin here, which is nice and warm. So I'm gonna create a new blank layer and I'm gonna change the layer blending mode to color. And I'm gonna select my brush tool and hold down option or alt and sample a nice warm color. And then at a low opacity, so I use 20%. I use 20% for pretty much everything <laughs> when it comes to retouching in Photoshop and a nice soft feathered brush as well. I'm gonna just start painting over these pink and blue colored skin tones over here. So that's balanced out the skin tone nicely. Again, we're gonna bring down our opacity. And then again, I'm gonna make a new layer and change the blending mode to color and zoom in and just paint over the bridge of her nose too. And then again, I'll bring down the opacity because we always need to blend out everything we do. And the last thing that is just bothering me about this picture is I'm gonna use the spot healing brush tool and remove this very bright hair that's on her forehead. I feel like it was just distracting me and this hair over here as well. And then I'm gonna use the stamp tool to just soften that up a little bit because that did create some harsh lines. Okay, so here we have our final image. So we have our original unretouched photo and this is our edited photo. I'll zoom in as well and give you another before and after. So that's the before and that's the after. Okay, so that is all I have for today's tutorial. I really hope this helped you out. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below or if there's anything else you wanna see as well. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.